Hi folks, Coach Wade here with uh, the first of our Knots to Know uh, videos. Um, today I'm going to be teaching you how to tie the bowline, B-O-W-L-I-N-E. So it's a compound word, bow, and B-O-W as in bow, as in the bow of a boat, and line, L-I-N-E. Um, but it's pronounced bowline. So we're going to learn the bowline. This is the first of our Knots to Know um, and I teach it first, not because it's the easiest. In fact, it's one of the harder knots to learn, but not impossible. And my system is going to make it fairly easy for you to learn this and to tie it very consistently every time. The reason I teach it first, though, is this is probably the most important knot you're ever going to learn. I really prioritize this. Um, you're going to see this knot everywhere on a construction site, um, trucker using it to tie down a load. Certainly on a sailboat, it's one of the first knots that sailors need to learn. Um, you're also going to see it just you know, tying a Christmas tree, the family truckster. So it's a really, really important knot. We use it for all situations where we need to tie something down. It's our anchor point. Um, I might add, you know, mountain climbing, rock climbing, just backpacking. This is a knot you need to know. Um, the number one knot you need to know. Four terms that you really need to know. The first, uh, and I've already had mentioned, it is part of the name, line. I want you to understand that line is synonymous with rope. In fact, Usually among people who use a lot of rope, line is the preferred term. So line is synonymous with rope. Uh, the second and third term really are the running end and the standing end. Um, and these are as much directions as ends. The running end is the end you, you are working with. It's usually the shorter end of the rope where you're actually tying a knot or tying the rope off to something. The standing end is the direction of the rope where you're not working and it's often where you have a coil of rope or the excess rope piled up or where the knot or where the rope is already tied off to something and now you're working at the other end and that's the end you're working with. So the running end is the end you're working with. Um, and the last term you need to know is a bite and that's how we're going to start our bowling knot um, and it's a very common term. So the term bite simply means to cross the rope over itself creating a loop. So that could be a bite. So could this. One root loop is up. Okay. From this point, we're going to now talk about how to actually tie the bowline. Um, and as I said, I have a very specific system that I think is going to make this easier for you to learn. If, on the other hand, you don't like the system that I'm teaching, you find it difficult or it's just too confusing for you, you know, it's not working for you, feel free to use the internet, you know, watching YouTube videos. In particular, there's a, um, there's a site called animatednots.com. Sometimes I find just looking at pictures with written directions is very helpful for people. If you use another method, stick with that method and find the one method that's most successful to you. If you combine methods, or you're trying it here, there, and everywhere, you're likely to be inconsistent um, about how you tie the knot, and those inconsistencies will result, with, result in errors that can make the, lot, the knot more likely to slip. Um, so to begin my method, um, and I'm going to move close to the camera so you can see really well, um, my method is going to begin with making a bite, and I'm going to be very specific how we make that bite. We want to make a bite and we want it to look just like this. We want the bite, the running end of the bite, to cross over the top of the bite. Again, the running end, here's my running end, and we want that running end to be the top of this bite. The next important thing about how we're going to tie this bowline um, in my system is that when we tie it, first we want to make sure that that bite not only is the running end over the top, but we want the top of the loop to be pointed away from our body, to be pointed outwards. So I have the top of my loop pointed outwards. Um, and the last thing I'm going to say is I actually want you to be specific, at least when you're learning this knot, in, in holding it a certain way. And if you hold it this way, it's going to be easier to see how to finish the knot and where the standing end is and where the running end is and your hands aren't going to get in the way, this is going to make it easier to tie. So that the way I want you to hold it is essentially pinching it between your thumb, your index finger, and your middle finger. You can have another hand, uh, finger or two handy nearby, but it's really I'm holding it with my thumb, my index finger, and my middle finger. Okay. From this point, now we're ready to tie the knot. It's very simple. Okay. I'm going to take my running end. My running end, I'm now going to give it a name. It's going to help us remember how to handle the running end and where it goes. I'm going to call it the rabbit. The rabbit is going to come up through the hole, 
The rabbit is going to go around the tree. The tree is the standing end, so I've given the standing end a name, the tree. Up, rabbit goes up through the hole, around the tree, and back down the hole. And those parts I just mentioned about coming up and then around, they need to be done that way every time. The last thing I'm going to do to complete my knot is I'm going to do what you need to do with every knot. When you're done tying the basic knots, because the structural elements are basically there, we need to cinch it down on itself and make sure that those structural elements are properly aligned so that this knot is secure. What I mean by structural elements, the two basic structural elements of this knot are basically these two interlocking collars. To dress it up and to get those collars to lock down, all I need to do is I need to grab the loop we created, that's going to be my anchor point, together with the, uh, with the running end of the rope. So in one hand, I'm just going to grab the loop and the running end, and in the other hand, I'm going to grab the standing end of the rope. And if I pull those in opposite directions, I dress up my knot nicely. Okay. From this point, especially as we're learning the knot, we want to make sure that we've tied it precisely the right way. So we're going to look for, for three checkpoints. The first checkpoint, we want to see these two interlocking collars, one collar at the top of the knot, one at the bottom of the knot. Next, we want to look for this running end. And there are two things we need to check about the running end. First, we need to check that it's on the inside of our loop. If you've tied it and it's come around on the outside, it's going to look like a bowline, but it's not going to be a correct bowline unless on the inside. If this running end finishes on the outside of the loop we've created, you've tied what's known as a left-handed bowline. And no offense to left-handed people, that left-handed bowline does have a couple of very special purposes, but in general, it's a weaker knot that's more likely to slip free and slip loose. So when we tie the bowline, we always want to make sure it's not correct unless this running end comes on the inside of the knot. And then the last thing we want to be certain of is that there's enough running end inside this loop, that there's enough of an end to it that it's unlikely to slip. So we're working with three quarter inch braided nylon rope. It's pretty standard you know, stuff to use in climbing and a lot of applications, and it's also great stuff to learn with. A general rule for rope of, of about this diameter would be six inches to a fist on the inside. If it's a little longer, it's technically all right, but we don't want extra rope hanging out. We want about this much rope, between a fist and maybe six, at most about seven or eight inches. That's our bowling. I'm going to tie it one more time, and then we're going to shift gears, and we're going to actually see how we would attach the bowling to an object. So again, here we're going to tie the knot. We're going to make our bite, and it's critical that we make the bite we make it so that the loop of the, uh, so that the running end of the rope comes across the top part of the bite. It's on top. Next, I need to make sure as I'm holding it that the loop is pointed away from my body. And we want to, in my system, you want to hold it this way every time so we can see where our hands go and where the running end goes and so our hands to, sort of don't get in the way of the rope. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to hold it between the thumb and the uh, thumb, forefinger, and index finger. Next, I'm going to take my running end, and this is the loop I want, I'm, I'm going to want to tie around an object. So now I'm going to move to the object, and so I'm going to move the camera for a second so we can see how to tie it around an object. Okay, so I'm going to tie this bowline around the handle of this cart. Okay, I have, before I can tie it around, I create my bite, and now I take my, my running end, and it's at this point that I'm going to put the object around that I want to secure this rope to. I'm going to put my running end around that object at this point. Right after I've created my bite, I take the running end and put it around my object. Next, I tie the knot exactly the same way. Remember, it's important that the, in my system, the rabbit comes up through the bite that we created. Next, the rabbit goes around the standing end. And finally, the rabbit goes down back through the hole. I'm going to actually use a little less running end. And there is my bowling, which remember I'm dressing up. And again, we want to look for our checkpoints. First, we want to make sure we have our two structural components, two solid locking collars. Next, we want to make sure that this running end finishes the knot inside the loop we've created. And finally, we want to make sure that this running end has enough about six to eight inches of length so that we're confident it's not going to wriggle free and slip. That's how you tie the bowl.